Okay, well, this is the final installment of the tornado tutorial series. How to create a tornado in Blender, of course. Um, in this tutorial, we'll be covering how to create the funnel cloud. Because we have the debris set up, we just have to create the funnel cloud now. Make it look like an actual tornado. Um, yeah, so what we'll be doing for this is we'll be creating a basic tornado mesh. Um, with a little bit of displacement, and we're going to give it a volumetric material. And I found that's the best way to make a realistic looking funnel cloud. So we'll get right into it. And we're going to add a cube. You may wonder why I'm adding a cube. Um, just hang with me here. And we're going to add a subsurf modifier at the end. So this should work out. And just press tab to go into edit mode and B for box select, and select that part there, or whatever part you may need to select. I'm just going to scale this up, Maybe scale that down a little bit, press E to extrude, and we'll just sort of build a tornado mesh from here, I guess. It needs to be smaller. So that's our basic tornado mesh. Um, we're gonna press smooth over here, change the shading to smooth, and we're gonna come over here into the modifiers panel and we're gonna add a subsurf modifier. I'm gonna set the view to two, enable optimal display to speed up the viewport and rendering a little more. And um, it does look a little weird at the top though, so press tab and press control R, and we're gonna add an edge loop at the top there move it up to sharpen it out a bit. Okay, now for the animation what we want to do is we want it to basically um, come out of the sky and come down and yeah basically interact with the debris from then on. Um, before we go any further let me add some displacement to this. Let's come in here and add a texture. Oh, well we already have a texture. Okay, um, yeah I tried recording this previously and something went wrong with the recording, so I had to redo it. So this is my second time around. Um, there shouldn't already be a texture there by default, so just add a new texture and make it a clouds type. And we'll add a displacement modifier, and click on this texture button here, and add the texture. And we're going to set the strength to 0.3, make it a lot more faint. Then I'm going to add another subsurf modifier to smooth that out a bit. So that's what we have so far. And what I'm going to do now is we want it, like I said, to scale from the top down. Um, but we want the object origin to be up here, so it'll scale with that instead of it being here. Because we don't want the top to move at all. Notice that the top is moving down. We want the top to stay put and just the bottom to move up. So press tab to go into edit mode. Select the top part of the mesh here. Press shift S and select cursor to select it, and that'll move our 3D cursor to our selection and edit mode. And now we want to press shift Control alt c which is a complicated key combination, and we're going to press origin to 3D cursor, and that will move the origin to the 3D cursor, just like it says. Affected the displacement a little bit, but that's okay because it's supposed to be completely random anyway. Um, I'm going to recenter the cursor now. So now, you'll see, if I scale this, oops, scale this on the z-axis, then the top doesn't move down at all. So what we want to do now is we want to animate it. Let me go to frame 1 to begin. And we're going to scale this up so that it's just like that. And we're going to press I to insert a keyframe. And this will be a scaling keyframe. So we just locked a keyframe for scaling in there. This is part of animating. Um, basically, we'll insert another keyframe here in frame 100, and then Blender will calculate the motion between those two keyframes and fill it in. And that's how you animate, if you don't already know that. Um, so on frame 100, we want to scale it down along the axis, just like that. It doesn't have to be touching the bottom, in fact it shouldn't be. Um, because the tornado funnel clouds don't actually go all the way to the bottom, from what I can tell at least. Um, yeah, 
So just something like that. And press I and insert another keyframe for scale. So now if we go back to frame 1 and press Alt A to play the animation, you can see that it is coming down slowly. It should be 24 um, frames per second, but it's only like 8, so it's obviously slowed down a lot since I'm recording. Um, but right now it's just scaling. We want it to rotate too, because this is a tornado. It's a rotating column of air. Um, so we need to do the same thing that we just did before, but with rotation. So press I on frame 1, and insert a keyframe for rotation. Now go to frame 50, and rotate it along the z-axis 180 degrees. That's RZ180. And then insert another keyframe there. Then go to frame 100, RZ180 degrees, and insert another keyframe there. And keep doing that, RZ180 degrees, insert a keyframe, frame 200, RZ180 degrees, insert a keyframe. Um, your end frame should be 250. I just shortened it a little bit because it did seem to get a little repetitive for a test. And now if we press Alt A, you can see that it's recording, recording, not, not recording, rotating, and scaling, which is just what we want it to do. But you'll notice that it speeds up in the middle and slows down towards the beginning and the end, which is not what we want. That's bad. You can see it's slowing down to a stop. And if you just wait, see, that's not what we want. So we want to select this, go into the animating section here, animating screen, and hovering over this, I'm just going to press shift space to maximize the window. And we're going to go into key, and under interpolation mode, we're going to select linear. And that changed it from a curve to a straight line, which is what we want. Press shift space, go out of that again. Check and see how that looks, and it looks nice. As you can see, it's hard to see because it's running so slowly, but I hope you can see. Um, it's not on a curve anymore, so it's not slowing down at the beginning and speeding up in the middle. It should be staying at consistent speed. So I'm going to go back to the default now. So now we have that, and that looks all nice. You can see it's rotating, scaling just the way we want it to. Um, I'm just going to wait a second for it to catch up here. Alright, that should be good enough. I'm going to stop it there. But you'll see if we render it, it looks really bad. looks exceptionally bad since we don't have any lights in the scene. Um, so what we want to do is we want to give this a volumetric material. So, on the materials panel, add a new material, name it Funnel Cloud. And set the type to volume, and that should be all we need to do, actually. So if you press F12 now, yep. See, the funnel cloud looks a lot better now. Just the way I wanted it to look. Okay. And that's it for that. So we now have it animated. There's just one more thing I want to add on to this. And that's an additional particle system. Because in an actual tornado, the particles, not the particles, but the haze goes all the way up the funnel. And this stops halfway. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to come over here and add a new particle system to this funnel cloud. We're going to name it Funnel Dust. And we're going to set the amount to 10,000. Uh, end frame to 250. Lifetime 125. Random of 1. Just like all the previous settings we did at the beginning. Um, and if we play it now, they're falling too fast because, of course, we have gravity enabled. And they're not pushing out from the funnel enough. They're sticking too close. So first, let's fix the gravity issue. Um, we don't want to turn gravity off because if we turn it off, then they sort of go up, and we don't want them to go up. We do want them to come down, just not come down as fast. So we'll put the gravity at 0.5. So now if we play that, it looks pretty good. It follows the funnel cloud, but it follows it a little too nicely. It's sticking too close. So we need to come up here, and we need to set the random to like 2, we'll say. And press all day, and now they're shooting out from the mesh a little more. And that should be pretty good, I think. Looks good from the viewport, at least. Wait until that touches down. There we go. Now it's officially a tornado. And I'm going to stop it there. And I'm going to... Oh, that's the other thing. Um, we have to go back here and change this. 
so that it uses material 2. Because we don't want it using material 1, which is this funnel cloud material. We want to give it a different material. So this will be material 2. And I'm going to click on this, and I'm just going to use the same material as we did for the outer dust. So the outer dust. I'm going to make it a single user, though. And we'll name this funnel dust. And I just want to make it a little bit lighter. And set the alpha to 0 0.02 to make it a little fainter. So now if we render it, you can see we have the hazy stuff on the outside of the funnel, which is just what we wanted. Um, so it goes all the way up, and it looks really nice. And it looks even nicer once it's animated, of course. Which I'm sure you could tell, because I have the animated result posted on YouTube. Which I can post a link to in the description of this video. So that's all for this tutorial, and I hope you've enjoyed it. And...